Hello there, geographers, and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Last time we talked about different site and situation factors and influences on urbanization. Today we're going to be going into Unit 6, Topic 2, where we're going to be looking at cities around the world. Today we are seeing more and more people leave rural areas and move to urban areas. The United Nations estimates that 2007 was the year when, for the first time ever in history, more people in the world lived in urban areas than rural areas. And it's projected by 2050 that more more than two-thirds of the world's population will live in urban areas. That is almost seven billion people. These changes in migration patterns have led to the creation of megacities and metacities. Megacities are cities that have over 10 million people living within the boundaries of a city, while metacities are urban areas that have over 20 million residents residing within it. At first, we started to see these cities primarily located in core countries. However, over time, we've started to see megacities continue to pop up in South America, Africa, and all throughout Asia. People are moving to these large urban areas because of the economic and social opportunities they offer people. Cities around the world are now changing and the spatial layout is changing with it. Many of these cities now are actually struggling to keep up with this new rapid growth. Cities infrastructure is being tested as more and more people now need access to fresh water, sewer systems, roads, electricity, and transportation. In some cities, we're starting to see massive shortages, not just in utilities, but housing as as well. And this has led to the creation of informal settlements, favelas, squatter settlements, and slums, with some of these areas lacking access to fresh water, sewer systems, and electricity. Cities in the periphery and semi-periphery have struggled to keep up with this new growth, as most of their resources are located in the center of a city. And as these cities continue to grow, they continue to expand outwards. We'll be coming back to this trend and going more in detail when we go into our Unit 6 Topic 5 video and also our Unit 6 Topic Topic 10. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those future videos because you're going to need to know them for your AP test. Now if we turn our attention to core countries, we can see new settlement patterns happening due to urbanization. As urbanization continues, we continue to see cities grow outwards. Here we can see the impact of urban sprawl, which happens because of advancements in transportation and new robust interstate systems. Roads now stretch from a central business district outwards, and it allows people to live further away from a city but still gain access to the benefits that the city offers. This allows for housing and commercial industries to expand outwards from the urban area, replacing the rural area and the farmlands that used to be located there. Speaking of advancements in transportation, we can see the rise of the suburbs in core countries. This is known as suburbanation. This is made possible thanks to robust infrastructure systems, which allow citizens to live further away from an urban area, but still be able to access the urban area quickly and efficiently. This allows the citizens to get access to different goods and services often found in urban areas. All of these new roads and interstate systems make it possible for people to live in the suburbs but work in the city. This has led to the creation of Boom Burbs, which is a suburban city that's growing at a very fast rate, often to the same size as an actual city, but it still maintains that suburban feel. We can also see the creation of exurbs, which are settlements that exist outside of the suburban area, but they still maintain a connection to that metro area. People who live in exurbs often can work from home and don't need to go into the city to be able to get access to the different goods and services they require. They'll instead go to different boom burbs and edge cities. Edge cities are cities that start to develop their own distinct economic district. These urban areas are located on the outskirts of a city and are traditionally connected by a major roadway. Edge cities will have a lowered population density and will have businesses and homes spread out more. This is due to land being more readily available. Edge cities will also have their own goods and services, a variety of businesses and opportunities for citizens that live in the area, and will have more specialization. This makes it so people no longer have to go into the city to work or to get specialized goods and services. Edge cities are often connected to a beltway that surrounds an urban area. This allows people to travel between different edge cities to access the different goods and services they offer. We can also see that edge cities have a variety of goods and services that can't be found in some of the smaller settlements around them. For example, they'll often have their own shopping malls, they'll have restaurants, and they'll have medical services, just to name a few. This allows people living around edge cities, for example, in an exurb, to be able to go to an edge city for all their goods and services they need, instead of having to go into the urban area. One of the reasons this is, is because of distance decay. Remember distance decay? We learned it all the way back in Unit 1. Well, the further you are away from something, the less likely you are to interact with it. If an edge city can offer the goods and services that I need, I'm more 
likely to interact with that location because I'm living closer to it. My travel time has decreased. If I'm going to go all the way into the city, I'm going to have traffic and it's going to take me longer. And so I'm less likely to do that. We can also see another concept that we learned about in a previous unit here as well. And that's the bid rent theory from unit five. Remember, as we move further away from that central business district and move away from that downtown area, land becomes more available. We also see our population density decrease, which means there's less people buying. This allows me to be able to get a cheaper home that probably has more space. For example, a front yard and a backyard. Or it allows businesses to reduce their costs because now to buy a retail location, it costs less money for that land. And so we can see that this influences where people are living and where stores are locating. You gotta love when all these concepts from unit one and five and everything starts to come together. And as we continue to see more advances in technology and transportation, we will continue to see more people move to the boombirds, exburbs, suburbs, and edge cities. Things like the internet make it possible for people to work at home and also shop from home. As we continue to see infrastructure improve with new roads, highways, interstate systems, and also high-speed internet be put in place, we'll continue to see more people move to the suburbs. And we'll also continue to see businesses move with them. Now, as core countries are starting to experience more counter-urbanization, we can see that countries that are in the semi-periphery and also periphery are experiencing more urbanization than ever before. And this is putting new pressures on cities as they're now struggling with their housing markets, transportation systems, and just infrastructure in general. But it's also leading to changes in their demographics as we're starting to see this urbanization rate change their demographic transition model. We're starting to see countries leave stage two and go into three, possibly even four. All of this is impacting their population growth rates. These are concepts that we talked about in our unit two topic review videos. And we'll have to wait and see what continues to happen as we see more and more urbanization occur and more advanced economies take shape. And just like that, geographers, another topic review video is done. Now you know the drill. The time has come to practice what we've talked about. Answer the questions on the screen right now and then check your answers in the comments section below. And while you're down there checking your answers, don't forget to make sure that subscribe button is clicked. And while you're at it, why not smash that like button as well? Helps the YouTube algorithm promote the channel, allows me to keep making more videos and make sure that you get notified when I post future videos. And if you do need more help with your AP Human Geography class, don't forget to check out my ultimate review packet. It is a great resource that covers all seven units of AP Human Geography, and it'll make sure you can get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. All right, that's all the time we have for today, geographers. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, geographers, I'll see you online.